How to know if you found the one? Cupid's arrow has struck once again, but things feel different this time around. This difference may seem exciting and frightening at the same time, but most importantly, it likely has you wondering whether or not the person you're currently seeing is the one for you. To find the answer to your question, you need to take a good look at both yourself and your relationship. Examine yourself. Stop chasing ideals. Ask yourself if you're happy with your relationship as it is or if you find yourself thinking, things would be perfect if. If you need things to change in your relationship before you can be happy with it, that relationship might be the wrong one. All relationships come with their own set of difficulties. Even when one problem is solved, another one will come along to replace it sooner or later. Finding, the one, doesn't mean finding a relationship without problems. Instead, it means finding a relationship you feel completely happy with even in spite of the problems. Re-evaluate your values. Consider whether or not any of your priorities have shifted since you began your relationship. Selfish pursuits should seem less important than matters that affect your relationship. For example, consider your views on monogamy. If you previously had no interest in getting married and settling down but now hope to do so with your current partner, that partner must be special enough or important enough for you to have altered those beliefs so naturally. Consider your appearance. It's a good sign when you care enough about your partner to put a little extra effort into your appearance, yet still feel comfortable allowing him or her to see you with sweatpants and dirty hair. Appearances have more to do with attraction than love, but when you really love your partner, you will naturally want to appear desirable in his or her eyes. Examine the relationship internally. Manage conflict but drop the drama. Everyone argues with those they feel close to. The strongest relationships involve partners who argue, but do so with resolution in mind. If you don't argue at all, it's a bad sign. If even the simplest arguments turn into week-long drama fests, it's also a bad sign. When couples don't fight, it usually means that one or both people are not being entirely honest. When needs, desires, and difficulties are not voiced, they are not addressed, and the relationship remains weakened. Healthy arguments are free of violence in all its forms, verbal and physical. The fights are fair, and no one tries to manipulate the other party. Share everything. Your significant other should be the one person you want to share everything with. Everything means just about everything exciting news, fears, that great new coffee shop you found, and so on. Ask yourself how often you stumble upon interesting things you want to share with your partner later on. The more often this happens, the more deeply rooted that person is in your mind. A deep connection signifies a deeper level of commitment. More significantly, honesty needs to feel natural for both of you. If you find yourself keeping secrets or know that your partner routinely hides information from you, that's a bad sign. Talk about the future. Think about past conversations the two of you had concerning the future. When the topic comes up, both of you should feel comfortable discussing it, and both of you should be able to picture the other as a part of your own future. Your talks about the future don't always need to be serious. If it's still early in your relationship, you might casually of the things you should do together, next month, or, next year. As your commitment grows, however, the two of you should be able to talk about your long-term future and the rest of your lives. Spend time together and apart. Both of you should want to spend as much time together as possible without completely falling apart when the other isn't there. Spend a few days or weeks apart and gauge how it feels. If you're completely unable to function, that might be a bad sign. If you can function but eagerly await the day when you two can meet again, that's generally a good sign. You should be able to have separate friends and interests, but if you feel happier pursuing these things than you feel when you're with your partner, your relationship is off to a bad start.